This is a Petron BCU or body control unit from a Rover 25. We're going to take a look at them in depth, how they fail and if they can be fixed. If your MG Rover has a key fob that looks like this, this video probably applies to you. The reason being that these are unfortunately notoriously unreliable. I was going to come in and say nice things about them, and I even wrote a nice script, but nope. I hate these, and I don't really keep that a secret, because unfortunately, as the cars have aged, they've proven to be notoriously unreliable. For example, this particular unit left my wife and her Rover 25 stranded at work. In one of my older MG ZSs, the function to lower the driver's window worked fine, but to lift it back up, failed leaving me with a very stuck open window in very bad weather, thanks for that, and I've had other instances such as the horn failing, and even in one car, a 2004 MG ZS, the horn being stuck on, which was an interesting drive home. So what functions do these control, how do they fail, and how can we fix it? Let's have a look in a bit more depth. Here's what's inside the BCU. If you've had one of the functions listed here fail, it's likely the relay controlling it has given up and needs to be replaced. Occasionally the transistor driving the coil in the relay is the culprit, but out of dozens of these I've fixed, I've only seen this once so far. These transistors can also give positive outputs to the relays in rare situations, meaning a function will be stuck on instead of not working at all. Of course, it's always worth taking the usual diagnostic steps before digging out the BCU, as it's not too easy to get to, but we'll come back to that. For example, if your horn isn't working, it's a lot easier to remove and test it rather than start by replacing the relay in the BCU. You can usually hear the relays click as they're activated, however there's a good few bits and pieces between the cabin and the BCU itself, so you'll need to listen carefully. It's the coils that fail, so a faulty relay won't click at all when power is applied to it. This is useful to confirm a diagnosis. Each individual relay actually contains two completely independent coils and sets of contacts, as this picture shows, which means where a relay performs two functions, one can still work perfectly while the other does not. I've labelled the relays in a way that shows what each half does. Where a relay only has one number, both halves work to carry out that function together. Let's start with one. This controls the rear fog lights. The front fog lights, where specified, are controlled by a large relay in the underbonnet fuse box. If you retrofit these, you'll need to tell the BCU you've added them as it still provides the energising signal to this relay from one of the transistor banks. Two drives the horn. Usually this is the cause of the horn not working, however it can also be the horn itself, as it was on my MG ZR, or the coil clock spring behind the steering wheel which can also fail. I've also had one of these sticks shut in the past, as I mentioned. This is probably due to the horn being an inductive load. 3 and 4 control the front and rear windscreen washer fluid pumps. As the cars age, the front pumps in particular seem to be failing more often, so it's worth checking before you diagnose the BCU as being the cause of yours not working. 5 controls the driver's side window, one half for lowering the window, and one half for raising it. This is useful for diagnosis, as you'll know the fault is caused by something else if the window has no power reaching it when the switch is pressed in either direction. 6 is in charge of the intermittent windscreen wipe function. When the wipers are on continuously, the wiper stalk itself provides power to the motor, but the BCU takes over when the intermittent setting is selected. If full and half speed work but intermittent doesn't, this relay is likely the cause. There's an unusual problem with the intermittent wipe function causing the boot to pop open on some cars when activated. This is due to the back EMF from the motor feeding back into the BCU due to lack of suppression in the circuit. There's an official fix for this which I'm going to cover in another video shortly. I'll pop a link in the top left when it's live. 7 controls the super locking function. This stops the door pins from being able to be lifted as a security addition from 2003 onwards. However, as far as I know, it only works on the front doors. And finally, 8. This one deals with the central locking function when operated from any of the inputs, the button on the dash, the key fob, or the driver's door lock barrel switch. 
The BCUs can also fail in other ways, it's not always the relays at fault. However, there are specialists on hand if you need them, such as Discat MG Rover Spares, Technosen, and Remobilize Limited. What they can do is clone your BCU onto a replacement unit with all the coding, VIN number, etc., already pre programmed, meaning it's a truly plug and play solution. The latter of the two can also code a brand new unit to your car without the old one being necessary. Very handy if it's been damaged, lost, or is otherwise unreadable by diagnostic software. I'll pop contact details for all three down in the description. A design flaw with the round Petron key fobs means that they can actually become corrupted by other key fobs nearby that use a transponder, including most BMW keys, and as a result, those used on the 75 and ZT, along with modern keys from other manufacturers. The only solution is to code a new fob to the car, and this must have the barcode information present. You can't reuse old fobs, as without a code supplied when new, they can't be added to the BCU's memory. The memory within the BCU is also prone to becoming corrupted, particularly if you jump start the vehicle or disconnect the BCU while the vehicle still has power. Before removing your BCU, make sure your vehicle's battery has been disconnected, and if you have to jump start, take care to use a jump pack that's designed to work with modern vehicles that are sensitive to voltage spikes. It's much safer to slow charge the car's battery when you have the Petron BCU fitted, this will rarely give issues. Let's have a look at exactly where the BCU is located, it varies from model to model, and how they're removed. It's worthy of note that they've not been placed in a DAF location by accident, it's actually part of a Thatcham 5 minute attack security criteria, basically meaning they're hard to get to by design because they also control several aspects of the car's security as well as body functions. On the 25 and ZR, it's located in the worst place out of the model range, especially when air conditioning is fitted. That's right, it's between the housing for the heater blower, heater matrix and air condition evaporator, we'll call this the HVAC housing going forwards, which itself is behind the glove box on the passenger side of the vehicle. Owners of late 2003 and early 2004 Rover 25s and MGZRs will be pleased to know the removal procedure isn't quite as traumatic as it is on the later vehicles, Earlier cars had the BCU suspended on a bracket with a hook at the top, meaning you could remove the lower nut holding the HVAC housing to the bulkhead, shuffle it forward ever so slightly, and simply unhook the BCU from the hook it was suspended upon. Annoyingly, during 2004 at some point, Rover got rid of the hook design and started using the same bracket but with a hole drilled in the end. This hole is then slotted over a stud on the bulkhead the problem with this being you really need to remove the whole HVAC housing on these vehicles to get the BCU out of the car. Not an easy job. If you have air conditioning fitted, this means the system needs to be degassed. There's a handy joint in the engine bay where the pipes pass through the bulkhead, but you'll need to make sure the system is completely empty before splitting the pipe work. If you have a 45 or ZS, it's nowhere near as bad in my opinion, the least challenging of all are the cars with digital climate control fitted. The BCU on these cars is located behind the centre console rather than behind the glove box. Still not particularly simple, but a lot less of an ordeal than the 25 and ZR. You'll need to remove the centre console, which is essentially a case of removing all bolts and screws holding it in place, sliding it backwards, and then moving it out of the way. Once you've done this, you'll see the BCU sat below where the stereo fits. In vehicles with climate control, you can simply unplug the control panel and move the whole centre console out of the way to get good access. However, cars with manual heater controls have the control cables limiting access. You'll need to either unclip these, which can be quite tricky, or work with the limited space available if you'd rather leave them where they are. Finally, the TF. Arguably the easiest of all the vehicles with the Petron BCU fitted. Remove the centre console side cover in the passenger footwell, remembering to disconnect the footwell light before pulling the cover away, and you'll be able to see the BCU. It's located in a bracket held in place by Torx Plus Security 5-sided screws in size 25. A bit of the bracket is bent over the screw, but with a bit of gentle adjustment you'll be able to gain access, remove the screw, and slide the BCU out of its holder. And that's it! 
If you've removed your BCU complete with cage, you'll need to remove that before continuing. Now, let's look at the relay replacement itself. It's worthy of note that all BCUs are the same across the model range, apart from the 75 and ZT of course that use a completely different system. This in turn means the relays are the same, it's only the coding from unit to unit that varies. We'll start by removing the cover. It's simply clipped in place in several locations as indicated here, but evidently I wasn't feeling particularly dexterous when I recorded this as I made it look a lot more fiddly than it really is. I'd recommend using a plastic tool to open the casing so you don't damage the circuit board if you accidentally catch it. Once the lid is off, you'll see the relays. They're all identical, one is just mounted at a 90 degree angle compared to the others. Flip the board over and it's pretty obvious where the relays are connected. The connections, particularly those that handle the current on the load side, are pretty beefy. This presents an issue. You'll need a good, high output soldering iron to overcome the thermal soak away from both the relays themselves and the thicker copper tracks of the PCB. My older 120 watt gas iron really struggles with this, but with a bit of patience it just about gets the job done. I'd recommend a temperature controlled electric iron of 150 watts or more. I picked one up from CPC recently and it's made this particular job a lot easier. I've always found the solder used within the BCU to be pretty hard to melt, either through age or its composition, so I blend it with some low melting point 6040 before using a desoldering pump or solder sucker to remove as much as possible. The solder pads on the circuit board are quite fragile. It's essential you remove as much solder as possible before attempting to pull the relays away from the circuit board. If they won't come away easily, there's more solder to be removed. The new relays should fit into position with minimal force. If they're a tight fit, use a solder sucker or desoldering braid to clean up the circuit board pads further before trying again, as I'm doing here. Once the relays are in place, soldering them is by far the easiest part of the whole process. Make sure you get the joints nice and hot, because these of course will be subject to vibration from bumps in the road, that kind of thing. You need to make sure they have a really good connection to the circuit board. And that's about it. Refit the BCU to your vehicle, reconnect the battery, and it should perform exactly as it should with no other intervention required. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, of course, hit the like button and subscribe for future updates. We'll be getting into plenty more detail about this system and others across the MG Rover range over the coming months and years. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully, we'll see you next time. Take care. Cheers.